guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to what I'm hoping is the last classroom setup vlog. I think this puts us at number five. After this vlog will be a full classroom tour walking you through every single space, going into detail about where I get every single thing. So definitely stay tuned for the tour, but for today, we are still in setup mode. All right, so I have some main goals for setup for today. I have several things that I need to create on my Cricut. And so many of you in my first four videos are constantly asking me about my bulletin board headers. So today I'm gonna show you and walk you through exactly like what materials I use, how I use my Cricut, um, how I cut everything out because I've been getting asked that so much. So that is something that we need to finish. I want to set up this teacher space, get that all dialed, and then clean and organize the entire back of my room because as you can see, there's stuff everywhere. So. Today and maybe tomorrow is all gonna be about just fine tuning, making sure everything is ready to go for my sub. So I'm gonna stop rambling and I'm gonna jump right in. Okay, so I need to create some kind of a title for right here. This is going to be pictures of the second graders. So I think up here I'm gonna say like future world leaders or world changers or something, I'm not sure. I hot glued the previous letters um, and the paper ripped off. So I'm gonna show you today how I laminate the paper first and then cut it out of my Cricut. That way when I pull them off, it won't ruin the letters and it won't ruin my wall. So that is project number one. I am also going to finish the front of this board right here. So I have my voice levels. I'm going to cut those out. I've actually showed you how I cut out the voice levels um, in a previous vlog, but I will show you how I cut out the header. So it's gonna say voice levels. And then I also need to cut out Mrs. Coates and second graders, because that is one of our management systems that I've talked a lot about. Again, I'm gonna use my Cricut to cut out those headers. And then this whole space needs to get dialed. Um, I think before I clean and organize all the spaces, I just wanna get these headings cut. That way I can just stick them up. So that's what we're gonna start with. I'm gonna pull out my Cricut and all my stuff, and then I will show you how I cut these headings. I guess I should show you though first, in case this is your first video, these are the um, bulletin board titles that I'm talking about. So anything that has letters, so all of these, you can tell are cut out beautifully and not because I have really good cutting skills, it's because I use my Cricut. It saves me so much time um, and you guys are constantly asking me about it. I just use cardstock, which I find is the easiest and the cheapest way to do this in the classroom. Um, and we'll talk about fonts a little bit later, but this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about headings. So now I'll show you what I do. I decided to start with this one because it's going to take the most brain power. Um, so I've set up my space. This is the Cricut Maker. They have so many different models. This is the one that I am using. So I set up my little area. Now I already ran into a little bit of a problem, but that's okay. Um, because I have been going from school to home so much, I didn't have all of my bright cardstock. So some of this is cardstock and some of this is just plain paper, but that's okay because it'll show you that you can cut more than one material. So like I said, for this title, I want it to be laminated. And prior to my Cricut, I would print things, laminate them, and then cut them. Um, but this literally cuts out all of that. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. What you can do is just put a blank piece of colored cardstock or paper in a laminating sleeve and laminate it and then the Cricut cuts straight through the lamination and it's already laminated and cut. It's like the best hack I've ever found and it makes the letters beautiful, which you will see in just a minute. So I have all of my laminating sleeves ready to go. The next thing that I do, and you guys ask me all the time is, what font size do you use? How big are your letters? To be honest, I really just eyeball it. So let me show you what I did for this. Okay, so I kind of want the letters underneath this like weird board. So I just take a piece of paper and I kind of stick it here. And I know that I want the height to be about eight and a half because this is a standard size piece of paper. <laughs> so I use that measurement when I get into the Cricut um, design space just to kind of drag the letters around and pick the proper size. And sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error, but I think I have it dialed enough now to where I can kind of get close to what I want. Um, so. Before I show you how I actually like make it on the computer before it cuts, I'm going to laminate all of these pages so they're ready to go. Oh 
Okay, so when you open up the Cricut Design Space, I just insert text, which is really easy. You're just going to type whatever text you need and choose your font. For these fonts and all of the really clean fonts in my classroom, I use KG Blank Space Solid and I do them in all caps. So then here is where I just drag it to, like I said, eight and a half by, I'm sorry, eight and a half is the height that I want. So this grid paper makes it really easy for you to kind of eyeball it. When it cuts, that's how tall it's going to be. So once I have it in the right size, you're just going to go over and click make it. And then from here, it's really simple. You're just going to drag it wherever it ends up is where it's going to cut on the paper. And then at least with the Cricut Maker, this is where you're going to select the material. Some of the machines you select it on the actual machine. So once you have the material selected, you're just gonna follow the steps here. Click cut on your machine and that is it. Before I click cut, you have to load up all of your materials obviously. So again, you just line it up with the measurements. Here's the laminated piece of paper. Insert it into the machine and when it's ready to go, you're gonna click cut and watch it do its thing. Well, that was an interesting turn of events. I was working on my letters and then somehow I got like locked out of my computer. The district, I don't know what happened, but I had to leave school, go to the district, drop my computer off. It was a whole thing. So uh, it's another day, but I did go ahead and finish cutting out um, these letters with my Cricut and I have adhered most of them to the wall. So I'm gonna show you these ones and then I'm gonna show you how I cut my black headings, which are the ones that you guys asked me about every single time I post a video, which is totally fine because I get it. They're beautiful um, and so easy. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my next header. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to show you what these finished laminated ones look like. I'm not going to laminate the next set because I just don't think it pops as much because it's a little too shiny. Um, so let me show you what these guys look like. All right. So here it is. Our second grade family. Um, I had to get a little bit crammed over here, but that's okay. The reason I laminate anything that I put on the center block is because when you don't and you hot glue and then you take things down, you are left with paper that I will eventually pick off. But for right now, I have other things that are a priority. So we aren't going to do that. But see how easy that was and how beautiful it is. Of course, you can print the letters and then cut them, but the Cricut just makes it so much easier to size and then obviously cut like truly saves me hours in work so speaking of now we're going to do our next letters so i'm going to show you this is the space that we're going to finish today so i have my voice levels i am going to do them again so i need to cut out a voice levels title which i'll show you in a second and then i need to cut out mrs coates and second graders so i'm going to do that all right now the same way that I did those other letters, just with unlaminated cardstock, and I'm gonna shrink them down. So again, I never really know what size to make the letters. I always just kind of eyeball it. So I use a piece of paper to just kind of gauge. So when I make them on the Cricut Design Space, I can just drag them. So I think I want about, let's see, four or five letters in this length. So I'm gonna do a little bit of math and figure out how big they need to be. And then when I make them, I'll just shrink them to that size. So the first step is the same as before. Again, I am using KG blank space. So I am going to just make all of the letters that I need and then eyeball it to figure out the right size and then cut away. Okay, I tried to peel that off with one hand while holding the camera and that was really hard. So now I have all of my letters, they're the perfect size. And then all I do is double-sided sticky tape and put them up there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now before I make my other title because I'm gonna use this as a guide for sizing for the next part.
all of the headers are finished, as you can see, the Cricut, like I said, makes it so easy. So here I have my voice levels, speak up, normal, whisper, and voice off. I had already cut these out, but I did use my Cricut. I actually have another vlog where I show you how you can cut out like images. This set right here, I believe it's free and it's from Miss Fifth on TPT. I will link it down below. These are just battery operated push lights. I don't know if I saw batteries in them. Okay, so some of them need to be switched out, but um, this worked really well for us last year. And then I ran out of border, which actually is fine because I didn't really have room to do it too anyway. So I have my Mrs. Coates versus second graders. I have talked about this before. This is our point system. It's me versus them. And then I had one more space for anchor charts. I know this is a little bit crooked, but it's too late. It is what it is. <laughs> so I love the way that this worked out and we are officially done with this front board. So before we move on, if you guys have any questions about the Cricut or how I cut out those letters, please leave them down below. Like I said, it is the most asked question. So I wanna thank Cricut for sponsoring this video. How cool of them to sponsor a back to school video when I use my Cricut all the time, especially when I'm setting up my classroom. The cool thing too about cutting out letters like this is it doesn't just have to be for classroom. You can literally use it for anything. It doesn't have to be paper. You can cut all different kinds of materials. I have raved about my Cricut since day one. So if you have been contemplating on whether or not it's time to get one and you're about to get in your classroom, for me, it was worth every single penny. It just makes the process so seamless and saves you so much time. So those are the headers. I will link all of the fonts that I used down below. That is another question, like I said, I get all the time. But now that this board is also finished, we are nearing the end of classroom setup. So I'm gonna look around and take a look at the things that I need to finish for today. It's already 10.30 um, and I am exhausted, but I'm hoping we can get some more done. So I will be back. All right, so I decided I'm just going to clean my room and get everything out of the perimeter and just make sure everything's in its rightful spot. If you're an OG, you know how I like to do this. If you're not, welcome to the crazy. I make a massive pile in the middle of my floor and then I go through it all. For some reason, that just makes the most sense for my brain. So like all this stuff, Anything that's like just thrown about, I will put it in a big pile and then it's easier for me to see where things go. So if you're struggling with clutter, this is a trick that my mom taught me when I was like seven years old and it really works for me. I do it at my house too. So here we go. why I do this. <laughs> it doesn't look like this is how cluttered the room was because it's all spread out. However, when you take everything off of the surfaces that don't belong, this is what you get. This is what you get. And this is all recycle that I have to throw out. I just emptied out all of my bins. So I'm going to quickly give you a pan through and show you where we're at. Because here's my thought. Um, I could go into labor any day now. <laughs> so classroom setup will be finished after this vlog. However, I am going to do a final classroom tour that walks you through every single space. That way I can link everything, talk about everything, all the little details, and you guys can find it all in one space. And you'll get to see all of this put away and just like the teeny tiny final touches, but we're not done with this vlog yet. Um, I do still wanna do my birthday board really quickly. And after that, I guess I'll show you where we're at and then we'll end it. So before we do that, I'm gonna go put up my birthdays. Let me show you my before for the newbies who haven't been here for a while. So I just created all this on PowerPoint. I actually think this is in my TPT store. I don't have really anything in there, but I think this is in there. So it's just, the months and then I make little cards on PowerPoint that just has the kid's name and the date. So if they're born May 3rd, there'll be a three with their name and then we just have a nice little easy to reference birthday chart. It doesn't take up a bunch of space, but it's there and I actually reference it quite a bit. So that's what we're gonna do right now. All right, so 
so that is what it looks like from far away. I don't want to get too close. But again, just a really quick, easy way to hang birthdays and reference it whenever you need to. So that is finished. All right, so this whole space is cleared off. We're pretty much all cleared off. I moved my rolling cart over here because that's where it will be. This is pretty much all cleared off. Everything is pretty much ready to go. Ha <laughs> ha, psych. Uh, that's that pile that we already talked about. We're just going around the perimeter. So, we are pretty much all ready to go over here. Yay! All right guys, so like I said, this is the last actual setup vlog, so I'm going to end it here. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will do my best to answer. If I don't get to them, I will definitely answer them in the classroom tour video which will be after this one. So if you aren't already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the final reveal. If you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Other than that, I love you guys so much. I can't believe that this is already over, but I had so much fun setting up this room, even though I'm not gonna be here until January, but it is what it is. All right, guys, I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.